All right, what's up everyone? My name is Matt and welcome back to another walkthrough video. In this walkthrough video, I'm going to be showing you part two of my occupations lesson. Just a reminder, this lesson is designed for a large class focused on speaking. So everything about this class is gonna be geared toward getting the students to actually speak. If you guys are interested in teaching this lesson yourself, don't forget there'll be a link in the video description below or you can go to my Taobao page and download this lesson yourself and teach it to your own class. If you guys enjoy content like this, don't forget to smash that like button. It'll really help me out. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already and leave a comment below if you have any questions. All right, let's get into the walkthrough. Okay, let's have a look at this lesson. So as always, I'm just gonna skip ahead. If you're curious about how I do the introduction with the rules and everything, you can just check out any of the, the videos on my channel and you can see how I do it in class. So let's just skip ahead. Okay, first thing I just want to mention again is students should definitely have a notebook for grade five. And um, because some of the vocabulary is harder, uh, definitely it will help them and comfort them during class. What I've noticed is that if they've taken notes and they have a notebook like readily available, when we are playing games, there's a dialogue, uh, they'll be much more willing to raise their hand because they can refer to their notebook. It will just give them some comfort, even if they don't actually look in it while they're answering my question, just having it there, just, just refer to just in case to cue their memory. So especially with grade five and grade six, they get a little bit more reticent to like raise their hand. Um, like little kids, grade one, grade two, like they'll raise their hand even if they have no idea what the answer is. But in grade five and six, even if they do know the answer, sometimes they're just like afraid their pronunciation will be wrong or it's just, it's harder to get them to participate than it is when they're younger. So having the notebook will just give them some more confidence. You know, of course you'll have some students who are, you know, really confident about their English and they'll raise their hands constantly. But what I've noticed is that the same kids who in grade in grade two or grade three are raising their hands constantly, by the time they get to grade five and especially grade six, you know, they're just more afraid. And I've actually asked them, you know, why? Why aren't you raising your hand? Is it because, you know, you're afraid of making mistakes? And like they'll be they'll tell me like, yes, like that's the reason why. You know, so I think uh, having a notebook is it's good on many levels, but it definitely gives them more confidence. Uh, during the actual class to participate, you know, because they're not going to all of a sudden raise their hand and then blank, like go blank, you know, and be embarrassed essentially in front of their classmates. So having a notebook, uh, it's great for many reasons. And this is just one of them, especially these classes are directed as speaking classes. Like my, I teach spoken English, so it's, uh, it's harder, you know, they have to be able to in front of all these students, all their classmates produce the language. Um, so there's lots of things they'll, they'll be concerned about. So having the notebook definitely help. Okay, so my warm up is just going to be a review. Um, since this is part two, occupations part two, we're obviously going to be reviewing um, the vocabulary and everything from part one. So first thing is the word occupation. Um, I really want them to learn this word. I just think it's it's useful it's useful to them and it's a harder word. Um, I don't want to say job, you know, jobs, because um, we're talking about like careers, occupations. Okay, so. Uh, for the for the review of the words, I will you know ask students to raise their hands and choose one, and you know they can they can choose one to come up and and they can they can tap the screen and say the word say the occupation. So here's police officer. They can call them out of order. You know engineer. Um, I wanted to do it this way. It's a little bit different. You know there were I wasn't just going through it one by one. They can come up and pick the one they want. Um, you know, if you want, you can add points to this or whatever. But with grade five, I don't think it's as important. Um, if activity like this for grade two or three, it'd definitely be, you know, putting points next to them. But for grade five, it's just real quick. Just give them the review, say all the words, make sure they, now these words shouldn't be too difficult for most grade five, um, especially like doctor, they're going to know and scientist maybe, but the other ones are police officer, doctor and police officer are the easiest ones. And then scientist, and then the other ones are harder soldier program or engineer. These are harder words. Um, generally I like to have, uh, like six to eight words in a lesson. And if two of them they already know, then I'll definitely do eight. If they're all new, I only do six, but I try to design this lesson because I'm not sure you know, where you guys are and how good your students' English is. So I want it to be, I don't want it to be totally six brand new words, even for my students. I mean, there are definitely three of them that like soldier, programmer, engineer, some of them don't know the word scientist, pronunciation is wrong, stuff like that. So the key part of this lesson is to the dialogue, you know, not necessarily the vocabulary. So I'm not so concerned that I'm teaching them a bunch of harder occupations. What I want the occupations to be something they can, you know, readily remember. Uh, in this case, only two or three of them being totally new, probably. And then they can use it incorporate into a dialogue, which is what, what I'm aiming for. Okay, so again, I'll present the question from last week. 
I'll have someone raise their hand and tell me what it is, just refresh their memory, what do you want to be when you grow up, and I'll just call on several students to, to tell me. You know, I want to be a police officer when I grow up. I want to be a doctor when I grow up. You can do it row by row. You know, you can call, you can have like row one, give me one, row two, give me one, you know, row three. You can have uh, someone from row one stand up and row one ask them, award points to row one for asking correctly. There's a bunch of different ways you could drill this. Um, I just want to get through this part of the lesson as it's just a, a quick a quick refresher. So they can go one by one, you know, row one, ask, answer, and give some points. Or you don't have to give points during this part. You just want to get them warmed up. Remember what they learned last week. You know, just remember what they learned last week, make sure they can all produce it. So that's the, the most crucial part of this. Okay, so time for the monkey game. All right, there it is. So I think that um, having them play the fun game for the previous class is a good way to really get them relaxed. So I definitely want to include the monkey game as a part of this review. Um, this should go really quickly because they just played it the week before. They remember exactly how it works. Um, if you need to see exactly how it works, just go back and watch my previous video about occupations part one. I'm not going to go through it right now, but essentially they choose one, they do the dialogue, and either the monkey comes and they don't get points or <laughs> to where they are or they are lucky and they chose a place the monkey doesn't come and yeah so let's just get past all right so let's learn so teaching part one um, here we are going to be learning uh, what each occupation does now i wanted to present this in a little bit of a different way so obviously i'll say you know who is she what's her occupation um they'll tell me doctor and then i'll say which one is it is it A, treat sick people, B, bail sick people, or C, fear sick people? And what I'm trying to like kind of gamify this part just because I think it's more interesting and I think they're more likely to remember, um, you know, which one goes with it because it's played as a game, you know? So, because they'll, they'll all be thinking about it, right? So I'll call on one student from each team and I'll have them guess which word goes with it. Is it treat sick people? bail sick people or fear sick people. Okay, team number one. I'll, I'll choose one student from each team and I'll see what they guess, okay? So team number one says uh, B and then, you know, team number two says C, team number three says A, team number four says A. And I'm like, okay, are you ready? Let's see. And I'll show them the correct answer. Oh, it's treat sick people. Good job, team three and four. And I'll have them write the word in their notebook. And I just think this way of presenting it is just, you know, it's gonna get them to remember. It's more interesting. And yeah, the key is just to get them to remember, right? So how can you get them to remember? Make it something memorable. If it's a game, they'll be thinking about it. You're not just giving them the answer. They actually have to be like, bail sick people? Fear sick people? No, that's wrong. It's gotta be treat sick people. But treat, trick or treat, huh? You know, so they'll be like, it'll be something that might stick in their mind better. So, and then move on to the next one, okay? so. You know, what's this? Oh, this is, who is she? Oh, she's an engineer. Okay, what does she do? Does she fix projects, sell projects, or design projects? Okay, so again, same same drill. One student from each team. It's a kind of a quick game. Oh, you can, oh, I forgot to say, you can award points for the team that gets it correct. Okay, so same thing. Then reveal. Obviously, obviously it's design projects. Uh, have them write it down. Have them say, say it a few times. They're going to be saying it a bunch of times during class, so you can have them say it twice together while they're writing it down. I try to tell my class, like, you know, while you're writing it, also say it, you know, so design projects, design projects, design projects. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Next one, okay, what's his occupation? He's a computer programmer, okay, he's a programmer. So is it write computer programs, conduct, con conduct excuse me, computer programs, or call computer programs? Okay, again, again same drill and then reveal the answer. Okay, so write computer programs. And yeah, this will be interesting for some of them. Some of them might already know this, uh, especially the ones who do do code, they, they know that you're actually physically writing the code, you know, um, but some of them might not be aware of it. Okay, so have them write it down, say it a few times. This one should be pretty easy um, as far as pronunciation because they all know the word right. All right, next one. Uh, what's his occupation? He's a soldier. Okay, is it kneel my country, watch my country, or protect my country? And you can go to each one and point at it as they say it. Together, everyone, kneel my country, kneel my country, watch my country, watch my country, protect my country. This one should be easy for grade five. Okay, so protect, this word's not, not gonna be very difficult for them. Again, presenting stuff that they potentially don't know with stuff that you think they do know, 
you put it together into one lesson that way they can feel confident you're not and you're not presenting too much new material which could be too much and overwhelm them right now next one is it forget crimes solve crimes or provide crimes and again same drill call one student from each team and then present the answer it should be solve crimes um, have them write it down next one is it take experiments bail experiments or do experiments okay again same drill and then present the answer do experiments and here we are just going to be reviewing each one again so i will um, after they've all written down i'll go through each one again so it should be do experiments everyone do experiments treat sick people treat sick people solve crimes solve crimes design projects design projects protect my country protect my country and write computer programs write computer programs is just to refresh the pronunciation and everything before we move on to the next part of the lesson all right so i think the next uh game the first game i should say the flash water game ouch that really hurt i think this game could be optional it depends how much time you have in your class um for my class I'll definitely let them play probably, but just one round, which is disappointing. But again, I only have 40 minutes to teach the whole lesson, so I feel a little bit pressed for time. And having them, you know, write everything in the notebook, it takes time. You know, if this were grade three, I could be into the flash water game quickly. But again, it just it's going to take a long time. The first time I present the game, though, I will explain it fully like this. The second and third and fourth and fifth time, I'll just explain it quickly. You know, without the visual, the visual takes long to explain, but I think the first time they play, it'll definitely help them to see how it works. So two students will come to the board. They will have fly swatters, okay? These are fly swatters, hold them up, show them fly swatters. I'm swatting a fly, okay? So part uh, step two, one vocabulary word will flicker. This is flicker, see it flickering, okay? The seated students will say the words. So everyone who's seated will say the words. The first student to say the vocabulary word will get one point. So you can emphasize that everyone is playing this game. Everyone is playing. If you are first, you can get a point, okay? Next. When the fly spins, if the fly spins, hit the fly, okay? And the first student to hit the fly will get three points. Now the students are gonna absolutely love this game. It's super exciting. And it's just a great way to get them to all to say the vocabulary words. And then obviously hitting the fly is, is fun. But like, because when one of the flashcards flickers, I'll show you, once one of the flashcards flickers, the first person who's seated to say it is gonna get points, okay? So the first person to say the correct answer here will get a point. And so that's gonna really encourage them. You know, I think when I first played this game, I didn't do it that way. It's just like, it flickered, okay, say it. And they would just say it, okay? but. Once I was like, oh, whoever says it first is going to get more points. Just it, 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 it like heightens the excitement around the game, you know, because when they see it and they're screaming, design projects, design projects really fast, you know, you can give points. And sometimes it'll be hard to tell which student was first, but you can just encourage them. I, I think everyone was good that time, so it's a tie or something like that. Some I tell I tell them like if it's a tie, I don't always give points, you know, because it's just. A lot of them might end up being ties. I'm like, okay, it's a tie, no points. It's a tie, no points. Okay, and then when the fly spins, the first person. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Just dry a draw. I mean, a fly on the on the blackboard, or you can have a, a flash card of a fly. But if they're hitting the flash card, it'll probably fall. So I just like to draw a fly really quickly on the board, and they just have to hit the fly. Okay, so it's a very fun game. Everyone is saying the vocabulary word. The vocabulary words many times and then when the fly spins they hit it it's exciting okay the kids absolutely love it um i've played this with grade two three four five uh they absolutely love it it's um it's not actually my game i took this from one of my co-workers a few years ago and i just think it's brilliant um it's a really fun game and yeah it just it really works to get them to drill the vocabulary words and many 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 times so and students like to you know, hit stuff, so it really works. So I definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next part. Okay, so I have a second game here. Uh, it's the matching game. And because like, there's two parts of these vocabulary words, right? It's like, a, there's a verb and then the noun. Um, I wanted to play a game where they could like, you know, practice 
um, and putting them together, remembering which ones go together. Um, this game, I think, could be optional. You know, I try to, when I'm pr producing these PowerPoints, I'm trying to give as much value as possible and as many ideas as possible. Um, not only if, obviously, if you're watching this walkthrough, um, you can steal ideas and, and see different ways of doing things to make it a little more interesting in different classes. And obviously, if you're buying the PowerPoint, I want it to be as valuable as possible. I want to give you as much as possible. And you can decide in your class um, like what you want to include, you know, because these PowerPoints are editable. So if you don't like this part or the part before, or it's too long, or you want to change the words, you know, just go through and edit as much as you want. And I've had other people tell me, you know, my PowerPoints are very good to like reverse engineer and change everything so that it can fit into your class. And that's another way to use it. I mean, just because you're buying the PowerPoint as it is from me, um, like this doesn't mean you have to teach it this way. You know, make it your own. It's just, I know it's easier to take something which is already built and and re-engineer it, change it. It's just faster. So I just want to produce as I just want to give you as much value as possible. So that's why I'm including this game, even though you know you don't have to do it. But I do think it does help them like get used to putting these words together. Okay, so here's how it works. You bring up one student from each team. You can have a, a line that board for them to write. And all they need to do is write a number and a letter. Okay, so you're gonna it'll be like this. You can show them this as an example for the first one. They see this appear, okay? This is obviously do experiment. So they have to see where's do, okay, do is one. So they write one and experiments is E. So the first student to write one and E can get points. Now you could have them write the full word. If you want them to write the full word, that's fine, okay? Like I really just want them to get to remember and see as many times as they can do experiments, do experiments. I'm not so concerned that like, they can spell everything quickly or write everything quickly. Okay, so that's the point of the game. Again, you could change it to make it a actual writing game, but here it's just a speed game. Who can recognize, see the picture, recognize what it should be, and then find the words on both sides and, and write the corresponding number and letter. Okay, and then after they do it, whoever got the correct answer, I'll give them one point, and whoever was the fastest, I'll give them an extra point or an extra two points or something. So you really gotta be focused on like watching all all of them. You can even assign like a student in all of your classes to be like your, your one of your referees who can be your second pair of eyes. Someone who's honest. It could be the student that has the three um, things on their on their arm that represents they're like a leader, a class leader. You can make that student like your helper, right? They're the ones who they have the respect of the teacher already, the Chinese teacher I mean, and the class. They're like the ones who check when they're doing the eye exercises and they're just kind of like the student representative for that class. So there'll be a good person to help you to like really see who's first. Cause it can, you really have to be focusing on it. If you you're not focusing for a second, you could, you know, be off. And if they're really close, I might just make it a tie. Okay. So bring up the next group, same thing. Give them all chalk place to write. Are you ready? Okay. Start to show what it is and you can make that appear slower. You know, you can adjust that animation by going to the animation tab, like the format and going to the animation tab and you can slow that down and you can make it really slow. So it's like slowly, slowly appearing. That could be even more fun. It's just up to you, okay? So here, again, they should, what is this one? Okay, it should be design, projects. Design, but where's design, where's design, where's projects, where's projects? Okay, and then the first student to write 5B can get the points, or the extra points. Everyone who writes it, 5B can get one point at least. Everyone say it together, design projects, design projects. All right, good job. Go sit down, next group comes up, rinse and repeat. Okay, now another reason that I'm having them just write the number and the letter is because it's it's faster. Okay, I don't have that much time in my class, so I want it to be something that they can do quickly. And again, I'm not so concerned that they can write and spell everything correctly. I'm teaching spoken English. I wanna make sure they can recognize things quickly. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm really working on here. So again, write computer programs, 3F. Again, next one. Treat patients is 2D. Next one, you could shorten this up. I think if I was playing this, I'd probably do three rounds. Even if I, just, just to show them this game and, and show them something different, I'd probably do three rounds. I'd have six rounds in my PowerPoint, but I might just like do them together afterward. So the last three, just like, for example, you're like everyone, are you ready? They don't have, no one has to write anything, but everyone's watching and then you push it and the first student to say, 4A, okay. Maybe they can get points for their team or you just say, good job, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just, I, I always, I, I find a lot of times that I'll prepare 
slides, but then sometimes I can't always use them. You know, it just happens. In some class, I can. Everything goes smoothly. Bing, bang, boom. Go through each one. Some, sometimes just doesn't happen, especially if there's eye exercises. And for my grade five and my grade six, um, the times are not equal for all the classes. So two of my classes are 35 minutes and three of them are 40 minutes. So I'm not gonna have the same class, class length anyway. And last one. Okay, and yet another game. So again, these games are optional. Um, if you do get this PowerPoint, you can decide, do you want to do the one, the previous one I showed you, or do you want to do this one, or both? If you have a long class, you can do both. I'm just, again, just trying to show you as many options as possible, different ways of doing a, a lesson like this, different ways of drilling and playing games so they can learn and remember the words, okay? So it's very simple. Bring up one student from each team, give them chalk, a place to write, and you show them the picture, and now they need to write the correct word. Okay, so just a different way of doing it. They're only they're only writing the verb. Okay, so that should be solve crimes. Um, you can do it whoever's first gets points. Spells whoever spelled it correctly gets points. Um, if they get pretty close, you know, you can give them a point. So it can be like if they're close, everyone gets one. The person with the correct spelling or the students with the right spelling get an extra one, and the first student can have an extra one. So at minimum, they can get one point even if they spell it wrong. You can do it like that. Okay. <clears throat> And just rinse and repeat, same drill. Um, I think some teachers probably prefer to teach it this way. They like it better. They want them to write the words. It's fine, you know. I um, I think for grade five they can definitely do it, and they're not bring their notebook up. But again, uh, it's things like this take time. This one would be fun just to write the verb. You know, they'll be trying to scribble it. I mean, I personally trying to write this very quickly. My handwriting is already terrible. So if I was in a in a race. Um, even though I speak fluent English, my first language, when I'm trying to write this stuff down, like under pressure, it's going to come out as scribble, okay? Which can be funny during the class to watch them try to do it, but it doesn't really mean they're good or bad at English if they can't write it clearly. That's my point. Some students have very nice handwriting. They have really good dexterity when trying to write stuff. Um, that's not me. So um, it's just another thing to think about when you're doing something like this. It could really, it could help some of the students who maybe don't speak as well, but they can write pretty well. So. It could, it can kind of even the playing field. You know, you got students who speak really well, but their handwriting's terrible, or they write, they don't write as, as well. And then some of the students, they're too shy to speak, but they're really good at writing stuff clearly and have nice handwriting. So a game like this could really help them, okay? And yeah, that's this game, pretty basic. Uh, it's basic and it's, uh, it's fun. All right, teaching part two. Okay, just to reemphasize, everything we've just done is just about the vocabulary. So obviously time management is going to be an issue. That's why I kept saying, you know, you can remove some of those games. You're not going to probably play the fly swatter game and both of those writing games in one class. That the, the bell's going to ring, okay, soon. So I think, you, or not soon, but like you're just not going to have enough time to get to the most important part of the lesson, which is the dialogue. So I think you need to really think about which ones you want to include. And as I said, this PowerPoint is made to give you more ideas and give you more value. You can take these games and obviously if you have a long class, you can play all of them. But if you don't, uh, definitely you know use your discretion to decide which, one, which ones you want to include and not include. And you can take these same games and use them in other classes. Okay, just I'm trying to give you as much value as possible. So teaching part two. All right, so this is the question, right? Why do you want to be a scientist when you grow up? Okay, we already know that they want to be a scientist when they grow up because we already established that in the last class, right? But why? Why do they want to be a scientist when they grow up? And this is going to be using the vocabulary that we just learned, right? Because I want to do experiments. That's why. I like doing experiments, right? So in this part of the lesson, you can, you can drill it with them. Ask them the question. They say the answer. Have one team ask another team. You can have, in the very beginning, bring two students up, have them ask each other. Um, just want to really get them now thinking, okay, and this is why we learned all these things, right? Because you want to be, why do you want to be a scientist? Because you want to do experiments. That's why. Let's, let's, let's practice it in a, in a sentence and question answer format, okay? Same thing here. Next one. Why do you want to be a programmer when you grow up? And so now they should be thinking, okay, we just learned a bunch of things. We know what programmers do. They should be able to give me an answer. Call on one student. They tell me. Because I want to write computer programs. Okay? 
And again, you can drill it uh, for each one. You can drill it with the whole class. Uh, who would like to read the question this time? Okay, why well, you stand up? Why do you want to be a police officer when you grow up? Or right, who can tell me the answer? Who can tell me the answer? They, and then you call on a student, they stand up, they might have their notebook out, right? Oh, uh, because, you know, I want to solve crimes. Good job. Okay, the point is here, just get them used, used to the fact that we're talking full sentences. You know, I, I really, to my, I have a lot of issues with my grade six. This is my first year teaching them. They are all about the one word answers. Give me one word answers constantly. And I tell them, I want full sentences because if you speak in full sentences, you'll write in full sentences and that's what you need to do, you know, to get better at the language and to do well in tests. A lot of, a lot of uh, tests are gonna have them have to write out full answers, full, full sentence answers. So get into the habit of speaking in full sentences and then it'll come more easily to you when you're writing because it'll sound correct. You know, if you're always giving one word answers, then you're, then you're like, well, how should I be writing this? I don't even know how to say it, you know, they'll be missing words and stuff. So go through each one, drill with the class. And yeah, this is just the drilling parts so they can get used to it all. Um, and let's move on to the next part. All right, so here's the, the full dialogue. So the full dialogue includes everything from last week and everything from this week. All right, so as you remember last week, the dialogue was, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a, when I grow up, why do you want to be a blank? Because I want to blank. So this is the full dialogue now. The top two are from the, from last week, and then these two are from this week. So I think years ago I tried to teach this in one lesson. I had a 45 or 50 minute lesson, grade five, and I tried to do this one lesson and it was just too much. Obviously I didn't teach as much, I didn't have as many games and everything, but Essentially what I did is I taught the vocab, played a game, then I taught the, the like what they do, right? Do experiments and um, treat, sick, uh, treat sick patients or patients, whatever. And then I put the dialogue together really quickly and some of the students really struggle. So now when I'm doing it, I know like break it up into two lessons. They can really master all the occupations. They can master the beginning part of the dialogue and just, it's just better, you know, it's more relaxed. I don't have to rush as much and you will see in the in the weeks and months uh, after how well they retain all the information if I present it slower. You know, I think I did it, it was like four years ago, I taught this lesson and yeah, it was varying degrees of success. So <laughs> live and learn, try it a different way, try to do a little bit better. So here um, you can obviously have the whole class do the dialogue with you. You can have one, like team one and two stand up and team three and four stand up and then team one and two can be the teacher, team three and four can be the students and say the dialogue together. Or you can bring up you know, some students to model the dialogue or if you want you can have a, a die and have them do the dialogue and roll the die or whatever just to get them more interested. But we're gonna be saying the dialogue a bunch of times so here I just wanna present the dialogue, have them go through and say it a few times and then we're gonna play a dialogue game. So. Um, again, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a teacher when I grow up. Let's see if they can remember. Um, this is just an example. They can see what a dialogue is. So there's a dialogue and there's people talking to each other. That's essentially why I put that there. And so can you remember the words? So I've, I've, I've hidden some of the words to make it uh, fun. <laughs> okay, so here's how it works pretty much. They need to see, okay, it's a scientist and there's do experiments. So let's see if students can do the dialogue with missing words, okay? So I'll call on, um, you know, one, two students from one of the teams, they'll come up and I'll say, okay, you're the girl, you're the boy, go, okay? And they need to try and do the dialogue uh, with stuff hidden. And it's funny, you know, it's, it's funny to watch. Uh, the students will think it's interesting. Um, they'll be brave students who definitely wanna try it. And then regardless of whether they can do it or not, it'll just be funny and interesting to watch them like try to struggle through and the, the class will think it's interesting. So um, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you know, I want to be a scientist when I grow up. Why do you want to be a scientist? Because I want to do experiments. So that's the dialogue. But you know, sometimes they'll, they'll, be, they'll be missing a word or whatever. If they do miss a word, you can ask the class, like what word are they missing? And then someone can stand up and, and help them. And then you reveal each one one by one and the whole, the whole class can say it, okay? It's very fun. Um, 
there's a few different ways of doing a, lesson, uh, a game like this, but I just wanted to show you the most basic way. You could obviously go through and start removing one or two words, but I think with grade five, it's going to be pretty pretty easy if you're just removing like scientist or do experiments or a programmer and write computer programs. So I wanted to remove a bunch of other ones, but you could do it like so that you slowly remove more and more, you know, more and more of the uh, the words. That's another way of doing it. I I not I'm not removing the same words each time. I don't know if you noticed, but like I'm I'm changing it up so like there's different words missing each time, so that it's it's interesting. But Again, rinse and repeat. Um, you could do it as a competition, so you can bring up, like for example here, you could bring up like two students from team one and two students from team two, and they have like, you know, 30 seconds to look at it, and then like, okay, are you ready? And then they both try to do it. If you want, you can have like earplugs. You can have them like, you know, have to try to say it without them being able to hear. So they put earplugs in and they cover their ears, and then the, the one team's trying to do it, and then the other team try, tries to do it and you can make a note like in a notebook or whatever which words they missed and see which one which group can do it better you know you can do it as a head-to-head -head competition like that uh, would also be very fun um, you could have it that you actually put numbers here so they have to write the words that are missing you know that's another option but again since this is a speaking class I just want to try to get them to do the speaking right away but there's other ways you could do it you can print out the words on, on, um, on little cards and have them numbered and they have to put them in the right order. There's a bunch of ways you could do this. So it's very fun and again, just showing you a different way that you can do something with the dialogue so that it's more interesting than just, here's the dialogue, you say it, you say it, you know, it's gonna get boring for them. But here it's interesting and the students who are watching can also, will also be like looking at the thing and thinking, okay, what, what word goes where? Even though they're not the ones directly participating, they are thinking about it, you know, so. It's just another, just another way you could do it. Again, having the earplugs would help because if you, if they hear the other team say it, they'll know if it's right or wrong and it'll be easier for them. So if they have earplugs or if you have really good headphones, like you can like noise cancel headphones and make them put it on. <laughs> if you want to invest in some of those, that'd be really funny to have. In class, you put noise cancel headphones on two of them, tell them to turn around, you know, and they can't see what's going on. And then, you know, or you could bring a timer out. I've done that with some of the classes. Uh, where you have a timer, well, you have it on your phone, you have a timer, right? And you say, ready, go. And they try to do the dialogue. Every mistake that they make, you can add one second. And then when they get to the end of the dialogue, click stop, write the time on the board, add in whatever seconds for the penalties for mistake for mistakes made. And then they, then there they sit and then the other two come over and they do it the exact same way. Just a different way of doing it. Again, just different ideas, different ways you could um, plan a class and execute a class. And, to get them to say the dialogue and remember the dialogue. That's that's the point, right? To get them to remember. Okay, so as with the previous part of the lesson with the vocabulary in the games, I gave a few options, different games you could play. Here's the same thing. We had this, just this dialogue game I just showed you. That could be the, the final game before the little writing activity or presenting the homework. Or you could totally remove that game. You don't like it, you don't want that, and you want to use this game. Okay, this game is called Choose Your Future. Just a different way of doing the dialogue. In this case, they get to select which one they want and they get points. So the way this works is I bring up two students from one of the teams, okay? It has, they have to be on the same team, okay? Because um, it's not equal, right? There's this, this person, the green, has two opportunities to get points and the blue only has one. So they need to be on the same team, especially because whatever this person decides to say will influence, obviously, the rest of the dialogue. So they have to be on the same team. So the way it works is you have two students from the same team. Okay, you tell one of the students you're blue, one of the students you're green, ready, begin. What do you want to be when you grow up? And then this student gets to select. I want to be a, and they select, okay? Scientist, doctor, or police officer when I grow up. Based on what this person, this student says, this, this student will have to obviously say the same thing because it's a response. So why do you want to be a, and whatever they chose. So if they chose scientist, Obviously, the student has to say scientist as well. And then the green student says, because I want to. And if they chose scientist, they must say do experiments. Okay. Once they go through it once, then we go through it together as a class and I reveal the points. I don't want to reveal the points until um, they've, they've said the entire dialogue because you have a lot of oohs and ahs and oh noes if you're, if you're showing points 
you know, this at this point. So you want to wait until they've gone through the whole dialogue the first time, then you have the whole class saying it together, okay? And you could even do it that you don't reveal until the whole class says it once through as well. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Everyone says together, you're just pointing, okay? I want to be a scientist when I grow up. Why do I want to be a scientist? Because I want to do experiments. Good job, everyone. Um, then you reveal the points. Or if team one was the team that had the two students at the front, then it can just be team one that's saying the dialogue together as a group, okay? And then they're the ones with everything at stake. If everyone on their team is participating and, and saying the dialogue together, you can give them extra an extra five points or something like that to motivate them. Or you can do it as a whole class, okay? It's totally fine, but only team one is gonna be getting the points after the reveal, okay? So you reveal one by one. Oh, four points, two points, and two points. And what I like to do is I like to actually say it out with the math. Four plus two plus two equals eight. And I even have it on the board, like I'll write it on the board, the plus and the equals, and just get them used to hearing that, you know, the math in English. Um, it's just, it's really nice. So so for the, the, next, the next team to come up, you can either go to the next slide or they can play with whatever's left here, okay? It's up to you totally. I have enough slides here that you can do it both ways, but if they want, if you want, I mean, you could have them, the next two teams do everything based off this as well. They might not think it's that fair though, because they didn't get to go first, you know? Um, obviously you could decide who goes first, like which team goes first with rocks or paper or whichever team has the most points already, could have like, you know, the first go or whatever. So it's up to you totally. I tried to make it equal, right? So four, plus three is seven, plus two is nine. So they would have made more points by choosing doctor and police officer is three, plus three is six, plus three is nine. So obviously scientist is the lowest point, but who would have known, oops, sorry, but who would have known, okay? And let's go on to the next slide. So same thing, there's just different uh, occupations here. Like I said, you could have the next team have a go at the next set here so that they feel like it's fair. And same same drill, you know, just uh, um, do the dialogue, reveal the points. It's just a different way of doing it. In my experience, the kids really enjoy this game. They really like um, getting points for saying the dialogue. And, you know, it seems simple enough, but just doing it something like this could really encourage them to want to say it and be interested, which is what you want. You want them to be interested in what's happening because just having a speaking class where they're saying the the dialogue again and again and again can be monotonous, but if you if you have it so there's points being earned, they'll really enjoy it, okay? And I have enough slides, so if you have four teams, there'll at least be enough for each team to have one go. Again, if you know you're gonna have time, you can have, you can use one slide for, for two of the teams and then move on, each team can have two goes, okay? And at the end of the, the, end of the lesson, a little writing activity, real easy, same thing we just did. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want them to write the question. They should have already written the question down, but can write it again and give their answer and then why. And this could be the exact same thing that we just learned in class for those lower level students who don't have enough vocabulary on their own to come up with the other answers or, or no different vocabulary, no different things. They can just use what you taught them today. And then students who are, are a little better at English, they don't, don't have to use um, the words you taught. I actually have some extra ones here, cook, um, teacher, fireman, pilot, whatever else they want to be, dancer, um, whatever, whatever they want to be, you can have it here, okay? So it doesn't have to be, you don't have to say, you have to use what I taught you, you know? It could be whatever else they wanted, you know? If they want to be a bus driver or a taxi driver or an astronaut or ballet dancer or whatever it is, you can have, you can let them write it, it's fine, totally fine, you're not restricting them. And then, who would like to share? Now generally, I would probably have them share the next week if you do have a long class, 90 minute class, great. You can have them do it during this class after they write for 10 minutes or five minutes, whatever. You could even encourage them uh, to write some extra stuff if you wanted. You know, some of them really want to express themselves. Um, yeah, it's just, it's totally up to you how you want to do it. I'm just trying to give you some extra ideas here about what you could do if you want to have them write something down. And yeah, that's the end of the lesson. Um, obviously at the end of the class, count the score, award a star, and yeah. That's it. Don't forget, you guys can um, follow me on Instagram, teachermat86. And yeah, that's all. All right, that's the end of the walkthrough. I really hope you enjoyed that and hope you learned something new. 
Don't forget, if you'd like to download that lesson and teach yourself, there'll be a link in the video description below, or you can go to my Taobao page. If you wouldn't mind smashing that like button, it really helped me out, and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy content like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.